In the simulation, we are going to explore the hydroalkylation of toluene to produce benzene. Um, we'll, we will be simulating this using Hises, Aspen Hises. Uh, in, in, in the, the main focus of this video is actually to show you the initial st stages on the design of a process. So um, the first thing that we have to do after we decide what is the chemical reaction pathway is to uh, distribute the chemicals uh, in the process flow diagram. So the distribution of the chemicals uh, basically involve the materials and uh, the material balance. We will not deal with the energy balance at this stage because what we want to do first is to make sure that the simulation converges uh, uh, basically with all the material balance completed and then we uh, focus on optimizing the different units that we're proposing and, and, and checking out what are, what are the uh, right temperature and pressure conditions. Um, so in this particular example, we're going to be uh, having uh, two reactions. The principal reaction is the reaction of toluene with hydrogen to produce benzene and me me methane. There's a second reaction or a side reaction that happens in the reactor. Uh, this one is uh, 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 using some of that benzene, reacting with more benzene to produce the biphenyl and more hydrogen. So as you can see, the reactions do have an order. You need to produce the benzene first, and the se second reaction will be consuming that benzene to produce undesired byproduct. The, this information that you have from the lab uh, uh, that indicates that the re reactions proceed irreversibly without a catalyst at temperatures in a range of 1,200 uh, between and, and 200 and 1,270 Fahrenheit with more or less 75% uh, of mole of toluene converted to uh, benzene and approximately two moles of the benzene produced in the hydroclation reaction converted to biphenyl. Uh, final laboratory data was collected at a uh, pressure of 494 psi and operating temperature of 1,268 Fahrenheit. That means that the information above in terms of convergence, I'm sorry, in, in terms of conversion applies for uh, the data that we have here. So we are, we can assume that because we are in the range uh, in the range, right, where the, the conversion is given, we can use those as our um, uh, design specifications for the reactor. There's also information about the plant capacity, right? Uh, the, the plant capacity is based on the target amount of the benzene. In this particular case, we want to produce 250 million pounds per year, and we're going to be assuming an operating factor of 90.4% of the year, uh, or more or less 30, uh, 330 days in operation in a 365 date of the year. Um, remember that the plan needs to be up in uh, the, 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 the the year, the regular year, the calendar year, not necessarily the same thing as the plan being in operation. The plans need to stop for maintenance. The plan needs to maybe stop for emergency. So what we do is that we you assume an operating factor, trying uh, trying to uh, to design our process flow diagram, taking into consideration those the downtime that the plan may operate. These percentages depend on the type of industry regular you know uh, healthy chemical uh, chemical industry have between 90 to 95 or 96 percent operating factor so you know this is something that you can start you can assume it or in this particular case I'm giving this uh, to you so here the overall mass balance is carried out assuming that all the unreacted toluene is recycled and consumed in the process to be synthesized and this is important because it's giving us information of who is the limiting reactant and when you use that and, and you know this who is the limiting reactant you can then set some um, uh, icons and blocks in your hyces to control that okay so there's going to be two problems that we're going to solve with this statement. Figure one in the bottom is showing you the overall PFD. In a regular project, you need to come up with this uh, idea, right, on how you're going to distribute the chemicals. So um, in this particular case, I'm giving that to you. So the first thing that we're going to do is problem one uh, is to actually... Uh, 
determine the if the determine the uh, determine the feasibility of the econo or the uh, of the economic potential for the reaction reaction typically when we do a, a, yeah, a process from scratch what we do is that we calculate the economic comp uh, potential of multiple uh, reaction pathway that we, we may find in patents or research or articles or journals uh, so we compare the uh, economic potential and then we have other constraints that allow us to narrow down what is the best chemical pathway so this is just an example on how you can calculate that uh, chemical potential once again if you're creating this from scratch you need to c compare all of your uh, economic potential for other potential reactions that you're considering for your process if the process is not profitable it doesn't have any economic not profitable if the process doesn't have any economic potential from the get-go assuming 100% conversion uh, on the main reaction that means that it's going to be really really hard to actually make it profitable after we add uh, things like uh, not 100% conversion the separations are not perfect we all well um, uh, we always need to distribute the chemicals correctly so uh, when reality sh uh, hits right the uh, this assumption, we want to make sure that we start with a, a, a chemical reaction that it actually uh, has the highest economic potential. So, uh, you know, we have a positive, we have a potential, right, to be profitable at the end. So using the prices below in this table from uh, the ICIS chemical business in late uh, 214 estimates, uh, determine the economic potential in terms of cents per pound of benzene for the main reaction. Make sure that uh, take into consideration inflation by using the following cost index values, CEPC uh, of 2014 and the CEPC for 2019. Um, if you don't have these values given to you, you can always check this out uh, in the literature, right? They are available, always published at the end of the year. We're going to start with problem number one, then we're going to uh, continue with problem number two. And in problem number two, what we're going to do is use the figure one and try to create that PFD using HISIS. Uh, one distribution of chemical involves a large excess of hydrogen gas to prevent carbon deposition on absor uh, and absorb much of the heat of the exothermic hydrochelation reaction. Furthermore, the, to avoid any expensive separation of the product methane from this hydrogen gas, a per stream is utilized with methane leaves the process unavoidably with a comparable amount of hydrogen so this is typically common so you can see uh, in heuristic number five uh, from your book or any reference I'm using cider uh, reference book for this purpose um, to to use this heuristics to design some process when you don't really don't know where to go yet uh, because of the performance of the separation system to be added in the next synthesis step is unknown this is something that you typically design so at this stage is unknown to be able to distribute the chemicals, right, the amount of hydrogen that co uh, accompanies methane in the per stream is uncertain at this point in the synthesis. So we're going to end up having that, and you're going to see how when we connect the recycle, automatically we change from having a stoichiometric amount of hydrogen to have an excess just because of the recycle, and we will see that. Anyways, you can always optimize this, so um, uh, we're going to just set it up uh, initially. So hence, the distribution of chemical in figure one is, known, uh, is not incompletely. Based on this information, determine the uh, distribution of chemical in HISES by using a conversion reactor and the suave relish equation of states. So let's start.